So we have some breaking news that in a brand new CNN poll, Joe Biden is losing big to Donald Trump in key 2020 swing states. On the overall numbers, Biden has a lead. He's basically at 51 to 46 for Donald Trump, but he's losing by seven, 52 to 45 versus Trump in some key swing states. They basically took a dozen or so states, you know, it includes Florida, Wisconsin, Ohio, states like that, and threw them in to this aggregate polling. And what that comes out with is a result where Biden could very well win the popular vote, but lose the presidency and the Democrats would likely lose the Senate based on the imbalance of votes. Now, we know that the Electoral College is broken, but it's the way the game is played. And what's panning out in these numbers is what progressives were warning about all along, that all of the conventional wisdom pumped at you through the mainstream media in an effort to stop Bernie Sanders, that only Joe Biden could defeat Donald Trump was BS and that he was a weak candidate and that the longer we went with Joe Biden as the front runner, the more and more he would be exposed as a weak candidate and he would be fundamentally unable to win those sorts of progressives, win the blue collar voters in vital swing states and that when the push came to shove, Bernie Sanders was the one that could energize people to defeat Donald Trump, not Joe Biden. And this poll isn't really an outlier in the overall sense. It fits the general trend, which has Biden up over Donald Trump four and a half to five points nationally. But if you look at the real clear politics average, what you see is that Biden's lead over Trump has narrowed. It's at one of the lowest points it's been in the past couple years, and it's basically not been any lower since Super Tuesday when Joe Biden reestablished himself as the favorite. You know, there were some low points where Biden had really bad results in Iowa and New Hampshire, but since becoming the front runner again, he has not pulled this poorly against Trump as he is today and in the last few days. So you can call this a fluke, but you might say it's starting to show a trend. We have to be 100% real here. This is not a good poll for Joe Biden. And there are two key metrics in this poll, which we need to see more data from. But if they are establishing a trend, it's absolute disaster looming for Biden. First, this poll tracks independence nationwide, and it shows that independents are backing Trump 50 to 46. Now that's close. It's within the margin of error, but Donald Trump winning independence, despite all that he's done in a negative sense, should be very troubling for Joe Biden and the Democrats. And we recall, and I don't want to rub it in too much, that Bernie Sanders was the one amongst all the presidential candidates running for the Democratic nomination that did very well in polling with independents. And so you wonder when you're looking at the independent vote, which matters, of course, in those swing states, that Bernie Sanders might have been better poised to reach those people. And and the sample size is small, so we have to keep that caveat in mind. And this poll also shows that in swing states, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are basically running neck and neck with young people. In some of those states, Biden is losing young people to Donald Trump in some swing states. Now, that's a bit surprising that he would lose young people. But in any case, if Biden is not blowing Trump out of the water with young people in basically every state, that's a disaster. Hillary Clinton and some of her weaker states even did very well with young people. That was one of Hillary's strengths. They didn't turn out in the levels needed. They didn't Pokemon go to the polls. But when they did vote, they largely voted for Hillary. If that's not going to be the case for Joe Biden, my goodness, this is going to be a very, very long election. And of course, as we know, trying not to rub it in again, that Bernie Sanders was by far, by far the most popular with young voters. The younger you went, the more they were with Bernie. People under 30, but even people under 40 in pretty much every poll in most primaries, even the ones Bernie lost, were with Bernie before they were with Biden. And if you want somebody that can reach young people, not only guarantee that the vast majority of young people that do vote, vote Democrat, but that they actually come to vote because you're giving them something to vote for and not just something to vote against, you should have picked Bernie Sanders. 
And so I want to air this out again, not because I want Joe Biden to lose. I don't. I would rather Biden be president than Trump. Of course, I'd rather neither be president. My point is that all of this conventional wisdom that CNN themselves, but also MSNBC and other sources pumped at you was wrong. They were at the very least wrong, if not lying to you, because the goal number one was making sure Bernie didn't become the nominee. And a lot of these Democrats, I'm sure they would rather win than lose to Donald Trump. But I'm also quite certain that the most elite Democrats would rather four more years of Trump than a Bernie Sanders presidency that would fundamentally tear down their social and political and economic and cultural privilege. I I have no doubt in my mind. That doesn't apply to the average Democratic voter, I believe, but I think that applies to the party insiders, the cream of the crop in the Democratic Party. And so we've been saying this all along, that Joe Biden's electability was manufactured. It was a mythology and that Bernie Sanders, more than anyone else, was the real electable choice for Democrats. It's not a guarantee Bernie Sanders would win. It's not a guarantee that if everything else was the same, except Bernie was the candidate and Biden wasn't, that Bernie would instantly rock it and win 100%. No one can predict that. But what I am saying is that you could have had a candidate that actually represented the values of the party and didn't have horrible scandals like the Tara Reid scandal attached to his name all without having to lose the election. You could have your principles and actually still win. Right now, we're looking at a scenario where Democrats are twisting themselves into pretzels to defend a man that doesn't support their policies and has done awful things to women, all to lose. You're not even going to get a win for it. You're not even going to get the presidency for it. So I think there's still time. There's still time for people to snap out of it replace Joe Biden. But even if that doesn't happen, because I don't think it's going to happen, you know, we don't want to sell false hope when the chips come down in early November and people start looking for who to blame like they did in 2016. I guarantee you they're going to blame Bernie. They're going to blame all of the Bernie endorsers. They're going to blame progressive media. And frankly, they're going to blame every single person that supported Bernie Sanders even a little bit. And we have to be ready to say every step of the way before the primary, during the primary and after the primary, we warned you, Joe, we warned you, Joe Biden stands that this wasn't going to work. At the very least, Biden needs to realize that he needs to up his game in a policy sense to reach young people. But frankly, I don't know if Biden is salvageable as a candidate. We'll have to wait and see. But don't be surprised if you wake up in early November and you get another four years of Donald Trump. 